Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Likeable Science. Likeable Science, as viewers know, is all about why science is meaningful to our lives, why it's a vital and interesting part of our lives. And we're going to really take that into an into a interesting and different direction today. We're going to be talking about the March for Science. With me today in the Think Tech studios are Dr. Helen Spafford, uh, and who is, I guess, the local organizer for the March yes. of Science. Uh, March for Science, and Alicia Wood Charlson, who is also deeply involved in that. Both have interesting positions at the university in different departments, talking about science communication, etymology. Uh, but tell us a little bit, I mean, sort of people will ask me, I'm sure, you know, sort of what is the March for Science? Okay, um, the March for Science is uh, basically a, a movement where people are coming together to um, talk about the importance of science in our society. And, um, and how we want the science to be, uh, science to continue and to continue to be funded. Yeah, yeah that, that seems, seems sensible to me, right? Uh, we, we, all, we all should want science, right? Yeah. We all want evidence-based policies. We all understand that one of the true measures of advancement in a, in a society really can be sort of their, their technological scientific progress, much more so than almost than, than any other measure in some sense. Mm -hmm. so, in terms of objective stuff. So why is this being organized at this point? Well, I think it's um, really become an interesting movement in the sense that, you know, there have been a lot of marches for various other things. And so um, scientists have always tried to reach out to communities and, and communicate their science. And um, this is another mechanism to try and get people together and really celebrate science. Um, you know, science is very important in everybody's lives. You know, anybody who has a cell phone or flown on an airplane or been <laughs> on TV, um, science really becomes a fundamental part of that. And, and I think that it's uh, a long time coming that science has kind of been sort of pushed out of a, a lot of what's going on in terms of creating public policy and and you know some of these other things that are going on in terms of alternative facts and so really everyone gets coming together to say you know we stand up for science we are advocates for science it's important to us um, and we want to make sure that it continues in our lives. Uh, so you see this as part of sort of a, a pendulum swing moving pushing science a little bit out of the mainstream and now we're trying to Get, get it the opposite way. Science has oftentimes sort of yeah. just been um, kind of understood to be there. I think oh. it's just been a little bit appreciated in the sense that like it's not going anywhere. And and right now it needs a voice. And so there's a lot of people that feel like they want to stand up for science. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, science, like all other enterprises, needs resources, right, to, to run. And if you start cutting away its resources, it doesn't doesn't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. Right. And so uh, can you talk about some of the other people who might be involved or other groups that are supporting this? Well, we have a number of organizations that have endorsed the, the local March for Science, as well as um, the organizations that have endorsed at the national level. Locally, we have groups like the Hawaii Alliance for Science, uh, Sierra Club, the Nature Conservancy, um, Pangea Seed. You know, there, there's, there's a whole host of them that are, that are coming to the table, as well as some university departments and colleges. And um, uh, the full list you can see on our, on our website. Okay. But um, yeah, we're, every day we're getting more and more um, endorsements from different organizations. And one of the best things about that is it's you know there's obviously a lot of scientists that are endorsing the March for Science, but a lot of these people aren't necessarily yeah. scientists. They're you know people that appreciate science or mm -hmm. advocate for con you know conservation um, or use you know better use of public lands. All of those everybody's mm -hmm. coming for their own reason. Um, but we've got a lot of endorsements from people that aren't necessarily scientists, which is great. Excellent. Because I was going to ask how. Uh, since it's called the March for Science, how do non-scientists get involved and how, how are you encouraging their, their participation? Well, basically, we just want people to recognize how important science is in, in terms of, you know, when they go to visit the doctor, for example, mm -hmm. you know, and the doctor prescribes um, either medicines or different treatments or even diagnosis. All of that information is really that the doctor is using has been generated through uh, some kind of scientific process. And, and then when you go to the grocery store and you get food off the shelf, you know, there's, there's science behind all of that as well. And so I think what we're hoping for, you know, sort of the non-scientists to, to do is to think about how science really impacts on their daily lives and every aspect of it. Um, and, and then, you know, connect with that in some way and just come and say, hey, yeah, I really want more of this. I want more of these valuable benefits you know, from the cell phone in our hands and to the TV that we sit and watch and 
Yeah, no, absolutely necessary. It, and, and you see what happens in places where science loses support. Uh, Spain, I guess, is, is a classic example right now. Spain had a, a big austerity budget cut in the last several years. It had something like 10 to 12,000 of their scientists emigrate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a bunch of the science sort of infrastructure in Spain, I gather, is suffering severely now. Mm -hmm. And plus, they're losing a whole generation of their, of their scientists. Yeah. Um, so. And that's definitely one of their big fears is that, you know, you might not see it immediately if you start sort of decreasing the funding for science, but um, it definitely will impact us further down the road in terms of, you know, technological definitely. development and, and you know, are, are we really going to be the ones that come up with the new, you know, new novel tools, so. Yeah, we don't, we you never, that's one of the beauties of science, right? You never know where it's going to exactly. go. Exactly. You, you, yeah. you, you do one thing that seems to have something be focused one way, and somebody takes it yep. and runs a completely different way. Like, literally it. everyone can do science. Right. So yeah. it's just who, you know, who has the resources yeah. and, and yeah. the space to do it. Yeah. And, and the U.S. in particular has been, you know, a, a leader in scientific mm -hmm. discovery and innovation, and we would like to see that continue. Yeah. And locally as well. I mean, and the Hawaii. state of Hawaii yeah. is a fantastic leader in a lot of these things. And, right. you know, Think Tech supports a lot of that. And, sure, sure. And so, you know, we always struggle to make sure that people come back and, and are willing to be in innovative and, and sort of help develop the islands, and that's now becoming true on a national level. Right. So in a sense, you could see, I guess, that the whole controversy over the 30-meter telescope being the same kind of societal pushback against science in a way, and, you know, and, and it's all playing out here in Hawaii as well as other places, of course. Yeah, and, and the main focus for this particular march is, is really, um, you know, the role of science to everybody in right. the sense of that. Like, you know, it crosses cultures, it crosses, you know, age sure. demographics, it crosses, um, you know, the ocean, obviously. And so this isn't necessarily about, you know, how those conversations are going on, and those right. conversations are absolutely mm -hmm. necessary, and they're very, they're valued in, mm -hmm. in, you know, everything that the March for Science is doing. Um, but it really is kind of a step above that. You know, it's getting kids out playing and making questions and, you know, hypotheses about if I make this piece of dirt wet and this one's dry, like, what does it do? Right. It's about sort of the curiosity and, and, and just exploring the world around us. And right. And, you know, I mean, science has had these tremendous impacts that you sort of think of it sometimes as having had a lot of impact in the past and, and don't think of it necessarily as the changes going on in our lives. And yet, you know, we live on average, what, 20 years longer than our grandparents' Absolutely, generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, among uh, economically advantaged nations, mm -hmm. we have severe health problems uh, in our, in our mm -hmm. old age. And so, you know, while we've mm -hmm. done certain things right, obviously we're, we're not doing mm -hmm. other things right in terms of supporting science right. and its applications. And Hawaii is kind of in a unique place because there is so much um, knowledge that already exists about the land. And, and so incorporating all of that into how we practice science, um, I think, is a really unique position. And so we really want to try and make sure that all of those people are included and, and can sort of come together and talk about how to do that best. Ab absolutely. The, the, the classic ways that the, that the Hawaiian cultures used water and used water very right. effectively, very right. efficiently, would use and reuse and reuse their mm -hmm. water on the way down down the streams uh, mm -hmm. and would regulate those very carefully when they flowed into the fish ponds and all that. Yes. Just very sophisticated systems, mm -hmm. uh, a very good understanding of the fact that this was a limited resource that, that had to be uh, right. car carefully preserved and, and used wisely. Mm -hmm. And I think this ties in very well with what the, the March for Science is really about. Um, it, it's about bringing people together to initiate and, and have conversations because science has its power through the sharing of information. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we as scientists just sit and, and do our thing in our little labs and, 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 and just publish or, or even just give presentations to other scientists, that, that it loses its power that way. Mm -hmm. But when we bring the community together to have these conversations and we share our knowledge and understanding um, with each other, then we really can do amazing things as a as a species, as a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's unusual to see scientists reaching out this, this broadly, this mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in, in a way this unified, and it's, it's great. It's a very positive trend. Um, scientists are typically not the world's best communicators. <laughs> they're not trained. <laughs> they're trained to communicate within narrow bounds. Usually, they're, That's they're, right, they're yeah. trained to take them mm -hmm. down down these narrow paths, and so it's it's great practice for them to to come out and, and try to share more broadly with with, with a, a public. 
Uh, and, and I like the examples you're giving about all the different ways. And I mean, that very, very much fits with the theme of what we're doing here. On the screen right now, we're seeing, I guess, there, there are march for, marches for science all around the globe, basically, here. Yep. Yeah, so, so I believe there is 481 satellite marches now mm -hmm. in 44 countries and all 50 U.S. states. Wow, okay. Yeah, so basically, you know, um, the, the kinds of uh, issues that we're seeing in the U.S., uh, you know, there's obviously a s uh, support for worldwide for those. And mm -hmm. because, as you mentioned before, in other countries, people are experiencing mm -hmm. the same thing in, in terms of, you know, the, the decreased funding for scientific research and, and, the, and yet the recognized need to have this continue if we're going to um, continue to function. Right, right. And it's, it, you know, it's, it is stuff, it's, you, you can't take that short-term view of it. I mean, the, the, no. if you think about the, this whole thing this past year when, they've caught, when they finally found gravity waves, right? I mean, that, that started back in the 1980s. Absolutely. They started trying yeah. to get these mm -hmm. machines together to do that, and, mm -hmm. and it took them years and years and years before they finally you know, got yeah. all the funding, all the right mm -hmm. teams, the right people, the right political will. And, and got the equipment right. to work. Right, and, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so it's, it's, it's amazing. So, in raising sort of raising the profile of science, raising this recognition. Uh, what, what do you sort of see it as a longer term goal then? Well, we definitely have um, locally. We're focusing on on some very particular connections that we're trying to make, mm -hmm. and so one of the things that um, has really uh, we've benefited from already mm -hmm. is the organizer the organizers are making connections with other local science advocacy programs mm -hmm. um, and so those are connections that might not have been made without mm -hmm. kind of this grassroots effort and so we can continue to support them in whatever ways they need as after the march is going on uh, and then also you know bringing this community together so people can start a network and, and really feel like part of a community that supports science and is willing to advocate for science we really encourage people to go home and talk to your neighbors mm -hmm. you know talk to your ohana and especially start talking to your local representatives mm -hmm. because one of the end goals for this is really to try and get um, knowledge-based decision-making back in public policy. And, and what, if we can accomplish that, even at the regional or state or, or local mm -hmm. level, then, um, then we'll move, I think we will have been successful. Excellent, excellent. Well, I had Senator Glenn Mackay on Likeable Science a while ago. Mm -hmm. I have to try to drag him back on here and we'll, we'll, we'll and talk about that. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. I think that's yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, but I mean, you're right, it's, you know, polls of the American public show very few of them can name a, a, a living scientist right. who they know, uh, or at least they claim this. Yeah. I find it hard to believe, but. Well, and I, so we encourage people to come, because <laughs> well, there yeah. will be a lot of scientists there, and we're all, you know, we'll all be wearing March for Science shirts, but mm -hmm. we look like everybody else, and right. until you, like, listen to us talk, and <laughs> then it's hard to understand anything we say sometimes, but. Yeah, we are just normal people, right. and I think that's the where the disconnect gets lost. Is that you know we do go into the lab and wear the lab coat and the glasses, but when we come out, we're just normal people. And we go to the grocery store, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and people often don't think of, they think of science as very divorced from sort of the rest of the world, and, and mm -hmm. it isn't. Science is, is a product of the culture it lives in, mm -hmm. right? Right. At the same time, that it shapes that culture, and so a, there is a very deep uh, two-way mm -hmm. uh, interplay here, and, and people don't typically understand that and believe that science sort of exists as this entity unto itself that mm -hmm. sort of has yeah. its own life. But. Yeah. Well, we do encourage people to come because one of the activities or events that we're having at the March for Science rally is uh, a meet the scientist table. Uh -huh. So we're actually going to have a, a schedule of, a rotating schedule of scientists from different disciplines come and sit at the meet the scientist table. And so if you want to meet an entomologist, I'll have a time there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> yep. and we've got stickers to hand out, so there's, you know, there's no reason not to come. Yeah. Cool, excellent. Well, this sounds like a fun event. Let's, let's get into more of the details of it after our short break we're going to take here. So uh, we'll be back in about one minute. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science. Helen Spafford and Alicia Wood Charlson are with me today, and we're talking about the March for Science. We'll Hi, I'm Cheryl Crozier-Garcia, the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every other Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 4.30 when we discuss the impact of change on employees, employers, and the economy. Hello, this is Martin Despang. Please join me on my new show, Humane Architecture, like the one in the back that you see by architect David Rockwood. The show is going to be on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu. See you then. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. 
where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. And we're back here on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today are Alicia Wood-Charlson Wood and Helen Spaffer, both from the University of Hawaii here at Manoa, uh, both helping to organize the March for Science, which we're talking about. And right before the break, we were talking about that you're going to meet the scientist table, mm -hmm. which sounds like fun. A lot of people yeah. probably won't, won't have met an entomologist before. <laughs> you know. And uh, from I know from talking with some of your students, you've got uh, they're doing some of the strangest research around. People yes. met people studying sea slugs and mm -hmm. all the fun, fun things that they study. Mm -hmm. So uh, what other kinds of activities are there? Well, there will be some different informational booths. We're going to have some face painting. And um, so it's like science face painting. Uh, I believe <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. There's it's going to be science themed face painting, mm -hmm. and um, and then we're also going to have some March for Science banners, blank ones, where people can come and actually write on on the oh. banner why they are supportive of science, why they they are there, and why they care. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, so it'll start at um, three p.m. and I think they had a. Right. sort of informational fly up there. It starts at 3 p.m. Okay. on the corner of University and Dole okay. on a big lawn just as you come up to UH. Okay. Um, and then there's, uh, we start at 3 p.m. there'll be speakers and then at 4 p.m. we'll do a march. Okay. We'll have an opening protocol and then we'll march. Um, and then Hilo is also having two events. One is going to be on Friday afternoon, evening, and one will be on Saturday the 22nd, association with the Mary Monarch Festival. Okay. Um, and Kauai and Maui also have events um, that are up there as well. And all this information is available on our website, which is at the top. Uh -huh. uh, the March for Science Hawaii. All right. Looks great. And there's the uh, route where we'll be marching. Yep, that's the route. Yeah. So we're um, coming down from um, uh, the university uh, corner there on Dole and, and University and coming down University and doing a loop and then back up. Looks, looks great, looks great. It should, should be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're expecting a, a goodly crowd, I, I hope, with, with a lot of the, the range of it, demographics here, right? It'll be, yeah. it'll be interesting yeah. to see who we can... And there's a lot of other Earth Day events going on that day, which is um, partly why we moved it to 3 p.m. Uh -huh. um, and so I think we're going to try and go to all those Earth Day events and recruit and stuff as yeah. well. Remind people that, you know, Excellent. when you're done, Excellent. you can come and hang out. Um, but yeah, we're expecting, um, I don't know what our estimates, about a thousand or so now? A thousand to maybe three thousand. Yeah. We're, we're not oh, sure. Sure, no, it's very hard to predict on these things. <laughs> uh, great, great to see them uh, in Hilo uh, mm -hmm. collaborating with the Marion Monarch yeah. Festival. That's, yeah, that's, we're really that's, excited that's a great way about to help. that. Mm -hmm. Link it to an, a well-established uh, event. Yeah. 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 Excellent, excellent. And um, so, what what kind of follow-up is going to happen? I mean, you can't just march and then like, okay, we're done That's and we'll walk away, right? <laughs> you got to do something beyond that. Well, we're still working on the the plans for the follow-up, sure. but again, because through this event, um, we've made connections with other groups and other organizations and other people in a way that probably hasn't happened um, before. And so our plan is to build, you know, this, this network of a, a communication network mm -hmm. among these different groups where we can um, keep, com keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and there may be other events that we plan in the future or um, communications that we send out to encourage people to advocate for science. Um, so, yeah, it, it just really just depends on, on um, kind of how many people come and how many people indicate that they want to continue, yeah. you know, to, to subscribe, basically. Right. to. And we're using science tools for this kind of networking now, right? This, this uh, Slack. Yep. Uh, yep. Say a few words about Slack. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess as a communications person, I suppose that's my job. Um, so Slack is basically an online forum where you can invite anybody and, and you can have channels in Slack for different topics. And it's a great way for people to keep informed about everybody, everybody's con uh, conversations without having to go and ask for an email to be forwarded or to be CC'd on anything like that. And so it's a nice, very transparent, open communication platform that we're using. Okay. Um, but we're also really you know, pushing a lot of social media. We're on Twitter. Um, we are on Instagram. And so please definitely come find us there. Uh, and you know, that seems to be doing quite well. We're having people host sort of why they march for science all the way up until the march for science. You know, because everybody's very passionate about this, and, and we're getting lots of pictures of beautiful sunsets and sceneries in, in Hawaii, and people marching for just those reasons as uh -huh. well. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, and, and there are. There, there's every day we see more, more and more reasons that, that we should should be supporting science. Right? There's more and more discoveries come out this that, oh, yeah. that just open up the doors and say, hey, we, we need to we need to figure this one out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the recent uh, connection that's being uh, the, the correlation between air pollution levels and the onset of dementia that, that's just being now sort of recognized. We, and clearly, it's it's a huge mm -hmm. a huge issue and needs to be looked at very closely and to see. You know, what the causative agents really are, what, what length mm -hmm. of exposure begins to have the bad effects, are there ways to reverse this, can moving to cleaner air mm -hmm. help, yeah. Um, and, and there's well, and we're starting to see some of the consequences when we don't pay attention. You oh, know, yeah. The coral, uh, all the corals in the Great Barrier Reef are really on this, for their second year, taking a huge hit because the temperature is sure. increased. And, and so there's starting to be some serious consequences mm -hmm. for not paying attention. And oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. we really need to, you know, have a voice now for on, science. On the yeah. Great Barrier Reef, didn't, didn't we just lose our, our first definite mammalian casualty to climate change? The little, there was a little vole-type animal that was oh. only lived on a few little reef islands, and now it's, mm -hmm. it's gone because there's just not quite, not quite enough island left. Yes. Yeah. And that's happening with, you know, people on islands, as yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. But you spend a lot of time on a lot of South Pacific islands. Yeah, it's uh, no, the, the ecology is changing mm -hmm. big time, and, and we need, need to we need yeah. more research, more resources poured into this to figure things out. More students mm -hmm. getting engaged in it. Uh, and I and I think it goes beyond that as well, though. And this is part of where the March for Science really does um, have an important sort of launching point. Is that you know we, we do need the continued support for science and actual core research, but. But these kinds of problems that we're facing now it suggests to that, that we, we as the scientific community and, and the community at large need to say, well, these discoveries, they're important, and, but we need to not just know about them, but we need to do something about mm -hmm. them. We need mm -hmm. to implement change in how we operate as a society in order to, um, to take advantage of this information that has been generated. And, and that's where this connection between science and policy is really important. Yeah. And that actually brings the, the other sort of related issues is to bring in the knowledge that already lives out there in mm -hmm. the broader community from, yes. from other cultures. Absolutely. Uh, and, and be sure that mm -hmm. gets incorporated because that's going to, to a large extent, shape how a policy gets implemented, mm -hmm. if it Absolutely. is successful or not, is, mm -hmm. is if it sort of is congruent with, with cultural values and cultural norms. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a problem. People, you know, they, they do kind of get that divorce between science and culture, but it's, there is a very close relationship. Um, and so what, 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 what are you going to be doing at the, at the, at the march? Oh. Um, All of running around. <laughs> yeah, lots of running around. Lots of running around. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to be um, probably mostly doing the social media component okay. of it. Um, we're hoping to have some uh, television stations there, potentially mm -hmm. even Jay Fidel has come down from Think Tech. So we've got some people that are willing to talk to them, and I'm just going to go around and just push all the social media. We will have a Facebook Live event mm -hmm. going. Um, and then we also have the Science Communicators Ohana, mm -hmm. which is a, a registered independent organization at the UH, at UH Manoa that I'm part of. They'll have a table along with um, what's called the SOAS Smiley Mentoring Bridge, mm -hmm. um, which is really trying to link um, local students in uh, community colleges in that sort of transfer to the UH system, mm -hmm. to kind of like have them bridge and have a community that they can sort of fall back on. So we'll be there hanging cool. out and, and we'll have stickers and all sorts of stuff. So. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Again, that, those are great ways to help, help enlarge that, that community of, mm -hmm. of students and getting a broad representation of the, of the, the diversity that we have in this country mm -hmm. involved in, in science, which is so critical because mm -hmm. science isn't, you know, it's not just a, a game for oh, one, one little segment. Oh, it's literally for everybody. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. it yeah. really yeah. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we, we need to be sure people understand that. Mm -hmm. and, um, so this sounds like it's going to be a great venue to, to help uh, ra raise that awareness. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can envision all, all kinds of things you could, could be doing I mean, even something like juggling, right? There's a lot of oh, science yeah, in totally. juggling, right? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot Would of gravity. Would you like to come and do that? <laughs> I do not juggle. I juggle very badly. <laughs> I think we'll have over 20 different tables and booths of people doing oh, activities and excellent, hanging yeah. out. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, should, I should think about some water activities to do. Well, <laughs> yeah. we'd love to have Absolutely. you. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. I could, could do the, the, the classic uh, water balloon with the, the flame under it. You know, where you 
put a flame on a water balloon and, and does not break. Oh, yeah. okay. You can come down to the science communicators on a table and explain to everybody how that works. That would be fantastic. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to do it then. That sounds like a good idea. So again, to review this for, for our people, what's what going to be on uh, the date is uh, April 22nd. 22nd, and that's Saturday, and at 3 p.m., 3 to 6, basically, they're at the university and then do, doing that loop that you showed earlier, but with parallel events in uh, Hilo and uh, on the other islands, too. Um, ah, there, there are the yeah, yeah so that's an image from the actual March for Science um, National, mm -hmm. and you can see we've all registered as being satellite marches. Ah, so. Okay, okay. And there's the, the, the formal flyer again. Very good that it's being done on Earth Day. It's very, yeah. very, uh, very good uh, congruence of events there. Mm -hmm. um, any last words that you want to urge people to, to join in or uh, inspire them in some way here? Yeah, we'd love to have you come, okay. but we're also looking for volunteers. So anyone who is interested in volunteering and helping out with the event and making it a great success, we would love to have you do that. If you go to our website, you can find a volunteer button and then just fill in the form and we'll be in contact with you there. Yeah, it looks like there are a great variety of different roles to mm, play. Mm -hmm. Some very, very sort of simple and, and others a little more uh, challenging perhaps for some people. But, but there will be people who will help you <laughs> through all of it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a good group of, sort of coordinators that meet every week and have been going through the process of permitting and logistics yeah. and all that. So we definitely have some good people that are going to help us run this. It's yeah. not just Helen and I. No, sure. no, no, no there's, yeah. a, there's a whole team of there's us. There's a team that we're no, here Very are. committed yeah. and passionate dozens and about dozens it. and dozens of names there of yeah. people. So that's, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Well, I look forward to uh, hearing more about this, learning more about it. I will uh, push it here on subsequent issues of uh, Likeable Science here. Well, up, thank you. Up to and including the day. And, uh, awesome then we'll, we'll have to you know, be there on the day. Well, we'll see you there with your balls. <laughs> <laughs> or flaming water balloons or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. We'll sign you up. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you very much, Helen. Thank you very much, Alicia. Thank good you. to have you here. And aloha. aloha. And we hope you'll join us next week on Likeable Science.